Hi, Texas government students. Um, I wanted to record this video um, to let you guys know a little bit more about the critical thinking assignment. Um, I realized I put a rubric up on Blackboard, but I didn't really go through that um, very well. And so I want to give you guys the chance to, if you've already turned it in, you can amend yours and, and say, forget the first one I sent you, or, um, you know, you can just, if you haven't done it yet, you can have these things in mind when you're doing critical thinking. So the thing about critical thinking is it is required by the school as one of the, um, one of the things that I have to include in a class in order to um, make sure that everybody's getting a, a really good education. And so um, usually in a long form, um, semester will have two critical thinking assignments um, in short form or you know if your class is being abbreviated then um, we'll just have one and we'll kind of try to get everything um, together in one critical thinking assignment so really what this is is just giving you an opportunity to um, practice some other skills like presentation skills or um, you know, writing skills, things like that, that you won't get on a multiple choice exam. So if we were in an in-person class, you would get extra credit for actually um, standing up in front of the class and presenting your information to the class. That's not available here, but I want you to do your presentation, like draft your presentation to the level of, um, if I was going to show this to my classmates, would I be proud of it? Would I think that this is a good presentation? So I'm going to go through um, the rubrics, and then actually the next thing I'm going to do is um, answer some of the questions that you guys sent me um, in um, the, the first discussion board, kind of all about me, um, informational um, assignment that you did. So um, before we go through the rubrics, I want to explain, you just have to choose one. I'm giving you guys two different options. Um, so you only have to choose one of these topics. You don't have to do two, okay? So let's get started. Okay, option one, what role did Texas play in the 2020 presidential election? Now, um, this is a broad, um, a broad topic and you can go with it wherever you want. So did we, um, you know, were we a state that um, voted, you know, Republican? Were we a state that voted Democrat? Um, did we put anybody over the top on votes, um, electoral college votes? Um, you can talk about voter turnout, and that's the first thing that you need to address is, is talk about what the voter turnout was in um, 2008, 2012, and 2016 in those three elections, and then talk about voter turnout in 2020. Um, and what you do is you express this in a percentage of voting age individuals. So when you're looking for this information, you'll be looking for, you know, some sort of a statistic like 75% of voting age individuals voted. Um, if you can only find the information on percentage of registered voters who voted, then that's fine, but I really think that you're going to be able to find the percentage of voting age individuals. But whichever, whichever one you use, you need to um, be consistent in these first two points. So. Um, if you're going to express it in percentage of those registered to vote who voted, um, do that for the 2008, 12, 16, and 20. And so I want you to present that somehow. Um, and I want you to um, also talk about the percentage of votes cast in early voting and then those who voted on election day 
and what those um, percentages could mean. Now, this is a weird year in 2020 because we are in the middle of a, you know, lockdown, pandemic, stay-at-home orders, you know, stay-at-home stay if you can kind of thing. Um, and so that may have been a driver for early voting, but um, you can talk about early voting as it was um, promoted by different candidates, things like that. Um, and then the last five points, this is worth 20 points total, the last five points is for presenting your slides, your data and slides with no spelling errors. And um, I didn't write this on here because it's in the syllabus, it's implied also in just um, being a college student, but no plagiarism. So don't just cut and paste from another website. Um, without giving, you know, dropping a footnote and letting me know where that's from. Um, but really, put this in your own kind of presentation. You can use any kind of, you could do one slide with all this information on it. You could do 10 slides with different pieces of information. You could use graphs. You could use charts. You could um, put it in, you know, different colors or fonts or whatever you think would be a, the best, most creative way to, to um, present your information. And also, um, just, I mean, you can, you can um, annotate it as far as, you know, if, don't put things in the notes, but you can write, you know, words on slides, you can do all kinds of things. So you can use whatever slide um, software you want, PowerPoint or Google Slides, whatever, and then you can just email it to me. Okay, so that is option one. If this is not interesting to you, you always have option two. Now option two is um, I want you to discuss the political culture of Texas, meaning choose one region from the map, um, it says below, it's really on the side, and it's really on the next few slides. Um, but choose one of these regions. So for example, if I wanted to choose East Texas that has Longview, Tyler, and Lufkin in it, um, I would list three demographic or historical attributes of that region of Texas. What's, what's special about that region of Texas? What kind of um, people move there and live there? Um, what's happened historically in that part of the world is that where um, historically there was a lot of um, oil drilling, was there um, a lot of foundries, you know, just kind of what was going on there historically. I want you to talk about three political attributes of the region. So things like, do people turn out to vote at a high rate in this region? Or are they essentially non-voters? Um, are most of those counties in that region red, um, meaning they vote Republican? Or are they, there are some blue counties in there, meaning they vote Democrat? Um, you can just talk about, you know, um, there's high voter turnout, there's low voter turnout, just something political about that region. And then how does this region compare to Texas as a whole? demographically and politically. So do 10% of the people in Texas live in this region? Or is it more, is it less? Um, are they more conservative or less conservative than other parts of Texas? Um, just kind of what, how does this region um, compare to Texas in general? And then again, present your slides, your data and slides with no spelling errors. You have a lot of freedom, you can use pictures, graphs, bullets, whatever you want to do, no spelling errors, no um, plagiarism, okay? And so because this might be a little bit difficult to, um, to read, I have put in the next two slides my, um, I, I just kind of a blow up of this map, and then also my notes about this map. So you can consult your notes, you can consult the lecture on this that included this, um, political culture discussion, or you could also look at my notes. So here's the blown up map. 
um, with the different cultural regions, it makes it a little bit easier to um, see how everything is labeled. And these are my notes regarding the cultural regions. Again, notes, they are just one word kind of um, things that you can look up. They are um, just kind of my notes from when I was looking over this information um, and kind of seeing how this different parts of Texas um, compared. So that is option two. Only choose option one or option two. Okay, so originally in um, the very first, I think it's labeled on Google, on, on, a, on the Google form, it's labeled like quiz one, which was terrible labeling because it was actually counting as discussion board number one. But I asked you to tell me um, some things about yourself, how long you've lived in Texas, what's your favorite thing about Texas, something interesting about you. And let me just say that um, this semester is no different from every other semester that I have been at TCC in that um, there are some amazing, interesting people um, in this class. And I just have to say, you guys are, um, as a whole, the people who responded to this are very interesting people. And I um, am very sad that we don't get to have in-person meetings because um, that is one of my favorite things is getting to learn a little bit more about you um, and then kind of see what you um, bring to our discussions because it's it's hugely um, enriching to have all of these different backgrounds um, people who were born in the United States then people who were not people who've never left Texas people who've been in Texas for six months um, it's been just very interesting um, to have all these different backgrounds coming into a classroom to um, discuss government. And so I'm very sad that we're not meeting in person. Um, I also have noticed that you guys fit in the same category um, as other past classes. When I ask you, where do you see yourself in five years or 10 years? Ambitious. You guys are ambitious and you um, have goals. You've thought about this. You know where you want to head and that is really important. Um, I'm a huge proponent of setting goals and so um, I, in my job, I have to talk about goal setting a lot, um, both in my law firm but also with the attorneys that I work with that are not employed by my law firm that that work for my um, my client. We we talk about goals all the time, and um, I think this is important. It's it's you know something you need to to think about. So you have um, a finish line in, in sight. You know kind of where you're trying to get to. Um, so I am um, a runner, and one of the things that's really important to me when I'm running is I need to know the path. I need to know, okay, where's the next mile marker? Okay, where's the finish line? Okay, where am I trying to get to next? Because if you um, run marathons and you start at the start line and you go, whoo 26.2 miles, that's really daunting. Um, but if you think, okay, let's see, I'm going to run to, you know, I'm going to run two miles and then we're going to take a break and drink some water and then we're gonna run four more miles and then it'll be time for us to eat one of our you know waffles that we carry with us and I don't mean like a real waffle like they're just these little sports waffles or whatever um, and you have to kind of break things up and so if I you know if I said when I was in my first year of um, college hey my goal is I am going to be um, an equity partner in a law firm, and I'm going to be the national coordinating counsel for a Fortune 100 company. I mean, that's pretty daunting, and that is, um, it sounds like a lot of work, and it kind of makes you want to take a nap. And um, 
So, but when I broke it up, it was like, okay, I'm in college. I want to graduate with a degree. And then, okay, next thing, I want to go to law school and I want to graduate from law school. And then my next goal, my next goal, my next goal. And so um, when you're thinking of goals, break them up into small little pieces. And um, I like that um, there were some very specific goals. And that's something you really have to... Um, you really have to have is something specific and measurable, like buying a house or becoming a teacher or attending, you know, graduate school or something like that. Okay, so I am going to um, answer some of your questions. And um, before you tune out, um, these things are probably um, great places for me to get bonus questions on quizzes. So, um, so we'll go from there. Um, some of you asked things like my favorite color, my favorite movie, my favorite um, thing to eat, things like that. Um, so I will go over some of that, but then also kind of some of the teaching parts of this too. Okay, so back to questions. Um, my favorite color is probably, um, gosh, this is really hard. I have a whole lot of stuff that's maroon that might be just kind of from my four years of brainwashing slash indoctrination at Texas A&M. But like, I, a lot of times I'll look down and it's like, oh, hey, my bag is maroon and my suitcase is maroon and I'm traveling and I'm wearing like a maroon sweater. And so I would say probably maroon is my favorite color. Um, Plus, I'm like a super fallish kind of person. I really like, I really like being outside. Um, I really like the break that fall gives from the hundred bajillion degree heat. Um, and so, yeah, maybe that's it. Maroon's kind of a fallish color. My favorite, like my favorite food. Um, this is terrible. And this is going to make you all think terrible things about me. But I love those little um, Totino's cheese pizzas I don't know I just they're like they finally give you the calorie count for the entire pizza which is good because I don't I was always eating the entire pizza anyway and so um so now it makes me feel like that might be a little bit more socially acceptable to do um and uh I ate it a lot when I was pregnant with my first kid and and I I don't know now it's just kind of my um my comfort food that's super not um, fancy at all. I mean, I, I love Mexican food, of course, because I live in Texas and it's amazing here. Um, that's probably my second favorite is um, some good old like lime, limey um, guacamole with some great chips and, you know, tacos, things like that. Um, let's see, something else you guys asked me that I can't remember. Um, favorite TV shows and movies? I think favorite movie would probably be Love Actually. It's something I watch all the time, you know, probably a million times um, during the, you know, winter season. Um, favorite TV show? I really liked Fleabag. Um, right now I'm watching The Queen's Gambit, and that's great. I, you know, just finished Justified. Wonderful. Um, so, um, yeah, that's the kind of thing. Okay, so let's talk about some more um, important things like um, what did I do before I started at teaching at TCC? Well, um, I still work full time as a, um, an attorney. And so I'm a civil litigation defense attorney, which means I defend, um, I def my job is to defend companies um, who are sued in civil cases. So nobody's going to jail, but it's just an exchange of money. So um, somebody will claim that they were injured by a product one of my companies made, and um, I will defend the company. We will settle the cases that need to be settled, um, not settle the cases that don't need to be settled. So my um, view of this is that I am a, um, a gatekeeper, or a steward of the finite amount of money that my clients have. And so I need to make sure that if there's somebody who is legitimately injured 
and legitimately needs their case to be resolved, then their case will be resolved. But at the same time, in order to save money for those cases that may come up later in the future, I have to make sure that the company is not paying to settle cases where there's not a legitimate injury or there's not, it's not really the company's fault. And so, because if we just pay everybody, then um, that money will run out, the well will run dry, and then later when somebody else is legitimately hurt, there's not going to be any money to pay them. So that's kind of what I do now, in addition to teaching at TCC. Um, I am a partner in a law firm, and so I have some, I would say, not really managerial as far as staff, but just managerial for the firm and, and seeing where the direction of the firm is going um, kind of responsibilities. Um, I am a client contact, and so I, um, for example, I was five minutes into talking about this slide, and my client called me on a Saturday. And um, so I have to kind of be available for my clients to, um, you know, talk to me and ask me questions and things like that about, um, about their cases. And so that's what I do in addition to um, teaching at TCC. So teaching is, is really um, something I've always wanted to do. And so when the opportunity arose, um, finally, and I don't know, I think it was 2018, um, I absolutely jumped at it. And I have not regretted one single second since I started. It's my absolute um, highlight of things that I do. Um, I am from Texas. Um, somebody asked that. I was born and raised here, um, born in the Houston area, raised in um, the kind of Dallas-Fort Worth area um, down in Granbury. I was um, raised by a single mom, and so it was when my parents got divorced that we moved. And so all of you single moms out there, um, I feel for you. I was raised by a single mom. I know that it is not an easy job, um, and I have so much respect for you. Um, let's see. Um, Somebody was asking me how I like teaching online. I do not like it. <laughs> um, it is, you would think that it would be ideal because I can record lectures at my leisure. Um, for example, I am sitting in my um, kind of work room now, which is my um, children's converted old playhouse um, from when they were little. And so I've painted it, I've made it kind of an office sort of, it's just basically like a shed. There's no electricity. There's no like um, heating or air conditioning. Um, it's just like this nice little shed out in my backyard. Um, you would think that sitting in my shed um, with, you know, my hair up in a ponytail and short and t-shirts, shorts and t-shirt on, would be an ideal way to teach, but um, I didn't really realize that uh, how much I got out of um, being able to see your faces when I said something and and pick up on the, oh, nobody's understanding what I'm saying, um, so maybe I should back up and say this again, or this is not interesting to anybody but me, so maybe I should just speed through this part or something like that. Um, also, I have had some amazing, amazing students, students that I still think about, you know, years and semesters later. I wonder, you know, um, how their students are doing, I mean, how their, their siblings are doing who are also my students. I wonder, you know, um, how are they how are they handling the election results? Um, some of them I know are probably really happy. Some are probably not happy at all. Um, I wonder if they've, um, you know, if they're doing okay, if they've gone back to jail or, um, you know, things like that. And, and I really do think a lot about that. And so I would say that 
I, um, my favorite thing about being a college professor is definitely the students. And um, that's the thing that I miss the most teaching online. Um, let's see, my favorite thing to do in my free time, um, I am a, um, an Enneagram type one, which if you guys are into Enneagram, you know what that speaks volumes um, of me. I like to do all kinds of things. Um, I like to work in my yard, which um, I do the whole like mowing, edging, weed eating, all the kind of stuff. I like gardening. Um, not a great gardener, but I do like it. Um, I like growing things like basil and then putting it in something that I make. I like to cook. I like to bake mostly um, and not like cook dinner. I like to do things like bake cookies. Um, and I like to read. I like to draw. I like to paint. Um, I like to do a million things. I knit my first sweater um, or crocheted my first sweater um, over the pandemic. I um, also, um, I sew a lot. So I make a lot of um, just, you know, all kinds of things. Make a ton of face masks right now. Um, and so um, I've started sewing these little banners that have like triangle fabric for my outside of my house, since that's the only place you can ever see friends is socially distanced backyard hangouts. And so, um, so yeah, that's the part of pandemic we're at right now is me sewing seasonally themed um, little triangle banners for my backyard. But um, so I have a whole lot of things that I like to do in my free time. Um, let's see. Um, what made me decide to be a government teacher um, is that I, I don't know. I've just really always wanted to do it. I, um, I became a lawyer because I don't like it when people don't follow the rules. And um, that stems from when I was a, you know, third grader and um, I had a, my own little personal bully and he was um, never following the rules. And so I basically had this whole sense of justice ingrained in me. Like if you basically in society, you have to follow the rules. And so I, you know, I want to make sure that people follow the rules and that um, and that being a lawyer is a, is a good way to do that because you have to make sure that the law is followed. Um, and if the law is not good, you have to make sure the law gets changed. So um, I've always wanted to do that, but I also knew that um, because I was raised by a single mom, I saw the importance of being able to have a career where you could support yourself. Um, should the whole world come crashing down like it did for my mom. Um, and so I wanted to make sure that um, even though I really felt like teaching was something that I wanted to do, I wanted to make sure that um, that I was, you know, prepared enough to um, support myself should I not be able to find a job teaching, things like that. So I did go to law school. Um, I went on a full scholarship, and so that made that decision a lot easier. And um, I, I liked to teach, and so I would always volunteer for lawyers in the school programs where I would go to um, junior highs and things like that and, and do a government day lesson or some sort of a law day lesson, um, just as kind of a one-off. Um, I volunteered to help um, speech classes, um, prepare for their speeches, for things like academic decathlon. And so I've really just always liked to be around students, be in the learning environment. And so, um, you know, I have applied for tons of professor jobs, but professor jobs are very, very hard to get. And so when this came open and, and I was contacted, I was just so ecstatic. I just was so, so um, happy. So um, last thing that I will do, I'll do some of this later. Um, 
But last thing I will talk about now is that um, what has um, what is my favorite and least favorite part of Texas government? I would say my favorite part of Texas government is um, the diversity of Texas and just seeing kind of um, like the, the different regions of Texas, the cultural regions of Texas, just seeing how diverse those different regions handle different things. You can see that in our um, our state representatives that are elected, just how different they are, the state representatives from, you know, Houston versus the ones from Dallas versus the ones from Amarillo, things like that. And then um, I would say my least favorite part of, of Texas government, the one where I always cringe when we have to talk about it is how we handled um, school desegregation because it was not great. And um, I always just think about um, what it must have been like for those students who were the first students that wanted to go to um, the white high school or the white elementary school. What must it have been like for them to see adults fighting against them and um, and really kind of um, what kind of how would I have handled that? Would I have sat by and stayed silent and or would I have been on the side of all of the other white people saying, you know, we don't want them to integrate with my my students or would I have been on the other side? Um, it's you can't ever say what you would have done in those those times. I will say that if it was happening today, I know what I would do just because I know how I handle um, political activity. You know, I handle um, how I handle um, March for Our Lives and Black Lives Matter and even um, my family's decision to um, put our children in a school that was more racially diverse than the one that they were supposed to go to. Um, I, you know, that's something that I find very, very important. I find diversity as, as something that is necessary to, um, to success. I mean, you can't, if, if everybody that you talk to is saying the same thing, then you're never going to be able to see another side of, um, the story, another, you know, get another perspective. And that's, you know, something that we're really missing online is you guys get my perspective on things, but you don't get the chance to say, you know, sit next to somebody who um, has completely different background from you, completely different age and, um, you know, family structure and history and things like that. And I, um, but that is something that, um, that I really am not super happy about with Texas government. So, um, okay, we are going to get started on the rest of the lectures. But again, if you guys ever have any questions, you can email me. I try to email back um, as soon as I can, but um, I, you know, can't promise you an email even within 24 hours sometimes. Um, at the same time, I am viewing this pandemic as a time with um, where everyone in the entire world needs to have a little bit more grace and a little bit more um, slack that has cut people. And so I am not going to um, be punitive as you guys have seen. I am not a super stickler for um, stopping access to lectures um, immediately at, you know, 1201 on the day I said I would. Um, I want you guys to have as many opportunities to succeed in this class as possible. And I, if you are willing to meet me halfway and do the work, um, I am willing to help you in whatever way I can. So again, email me if you need me.